Hi everyone, welcome to this video. So this is an uh, introduction to a new piece of software that I've developed uh, primarily for driver training and this time it's we're going to look at uh, training a driver's reaction um, but also their focus in their uh, visual periphery and this is the sort of thing that a lot of drivers might work on with like a Batak wall or some other types of reaction time dra uh, training uh, I've seen it done in American professional motorsports with a wall with you know many different lights on and they split the lights up into different quadrants to see how a driver performs uh, in the different areas of the peripheral vision um, but it occurred to me that uh, that's all well and good when you're doing the game and you're focusing solely on the game but in real life we've got the distraction of driving a car, driving a sim um, at very high speed while we're concentrating so I thought that it would be good to develop something that would allow a driver uh, to train specifically for things that come up um, <coughs> in his periphery whilst he's um, driving uh, and that's because primarily because back in 2017 I was working with a team a friend of mine's team in the British Touring Car Championship and um, I'm going to show you a clip of the of an accident um, that, that came very close to taking our driver out and the accident happened actually happened some way behind him and you think to yourself it's very unlike or sh <coughs> it should be very unlikely to have an uh, accident behind you affect you but as you'll see in this clip um, it was nearly disastrous Hopefully you can see what I mean by looking at that clip that there was an accident that happened a long way behind and yet yeah, the car got on the grass and came and very nearly took out lots of people in front of him. And I was amazed by the awareness that those drivers had to avoid getting hit and I could only imagine that what visual information they had to react to was very tiny, something in the corner of their eye, maybe something um, in in the distance in one of their mirrors that they probably weren't um, actually looking at, looking straight at at the time. So it got me thinking that for more normal people, and even for those drivers that want to improve and um, get to the next level, um, this kind of reaction-based or peripheral vision reaction based training would be quite useful and obviously the sim is the ideal place to do that because it's a safe environment and we've got control over it we can measure and analyze the responses and we can see where we placed the object we, w we want them to, re to react to and see whereabouts in the vision um, that was placed and how they react to it so they can get an idea of if there's a particular part of their vision that's weaker than another. So I'm just going to go through uh, installing the software um, so if you decide to have a play with it um, you know how to install it. So you, you'll download a, a zip file so if you just unzip it, extract files to somewhere that convenient then go to that place where you extracted it to and go to reaction game overlay setup debug and then setup except it will download some files and then install them just click next and let it install and then close and it will place on your desktop this reaction game icon 
when you start it up you get this window and if you press start a transparent window will come up full screen and you'll get this yellow square now this yellow square is what you're supposed to react to and when you press the A key on the keyboard it will disappear and then at some random time in the future you'll get another one in another random spot and what the software does is keep track of when it placed the yellow screen, uh, yellow square on screen and where it placed it so that we can analyse the position and the reaction time for each each time it plays the game. Okay, so that's all very useful, but it would be more useful if we could have the, instead of having to press the keyboard, we could press a button on the steering wheel um, to register that we've spotted the yellow square. And the way to do that is to download this program called Joy to Key. Now it's shareware, and it's really easy to use and works brilliantly. So basically, you've got here uh, all the possible joystick buttons and axes. And when you click a button on your wheel, it highlights what that button's assigned to. And if you want to assign it to a keystroke, so I know from that that the button I want to assign is button 7. So if I click on button 7, edit button assignment, I can then make it one of the um, keyboard keys. Hey. Go OK. So now when I press that button on the, uh, on the steering wheel it will be like pressing the A key. So when I now run the reaction game, I can press the button on the steering wheel to register that I've seen the square. Right, so if we run R factor, I'll give a quick demonstration of what it looks like running over a car on a circuit. Now I chose the yellow square on the basis that it would be like seeing a yellow flag. I always, um, always think it's amazing how uh, much information drivers see uh, when they're in the heat of battle that's you know at the side of the circuit a waved yellow flag or something. Not always obvious how they can spot it and um, it was highlighted by Hamilton's issue at one of the recent Grand Prix where they missed um, a yellow signboard and he took to the pits and got a penalty. So I think it is important that drivers develop their peripheral vision because it could mean the difference between uh, winning and losing. Okay so we drive the car now. As you can see there's a yellow square just to the left and above the steering wheel. And if I push the button on the steering wheel disappears and it and between two and eight seconds later the square will appear somewhere else and I've got to spot it while I've got the distraction of driving the car. Okay so you can see the yellow squares on the screen. If I press the steering wheel button it disappears. Now sometime between two and eight seconds later that square will pop up again. It's down in the left hand bottom corner. Now it's in. Ugh. So hopefully, already you can see what distraction. I mean, this program has only finished work it, uh, working this afternoon. So I have very little time to practice myself with it. Hopefully you can already see that what a distraction driving provides to playing the reaction game and what a 
what a distraction the reaction game provides to drive in the sim. And over time, should. better at spotting things in my peripheral vision. So a lap later I feel like I'm driving a bit more like Whoa. driving a bit more Ugh. spoke too soon and yeah, just got punted by an AI. But yeah, I think I'm driving the circuit more more normally starting to spot the squares a little quicker. I do feel like I'm yeah I do feel like I'm looking more more at everything in my vision rather than solely on the track dead ahead, right in the centre of my vision. <clears throat> it's kind of a weird sensation, actually. anyone who's interested this is the flat six Porsche mod around the Senamen Donington Park track It's amazing how often the squirrel sits somewhere totally unnoticed for ages and just goes to show how your focus changes and what areas of your vision you're actually aware of a lot of the time when you're driving.
Okay, anyway, so that's a bit of an overview of how the system works when overlaid over a sim. Hopefully you can get the idea of what the benefit of that kind of a training system would be. Uh, I've definitely got some ideas on how to develop it. And certainly we're going to be looking at a program um, to make analysing the results very Okay, so this is the data file that the program outputs. Um, which is basically the X and Y position of the center of the box and then uh, reaction time at the end and it's a CSV format so it can be brought into a spreadsheet program like Excel um, and analyzed we can plot the position and the uh, divide that position up into quadrants so we can see which areas of the screen um, the driver performs better than others in and we can see how he compares against other people uh, plot his progress over time and um, stuff like that so we can see someone's development see how their uh, performance improves and hopefully that r relates to improvement on the track so um, thanks for watching the video I just really wanted to do it to demonstrate what we're working on, the sort of things that we work on as well, um, because you know, fully focused on trying to help drivers get as much out of their performance as possible and continually improve. We work a lot with the British Touring Car Championship and drivers in that are facing a real battle because you know the difference between pole and last on the grid can be less than a second at some circuits and you know very small improvements in their personal performance or their abilities or in the car setup or anything like that could be a, a huge amount of difference to their qualifying or to their race performance and um so you've got to start looking at every aspect of someone's performance and simulators are really helping both with the en uh, car engineering side and with the driver's performance and understanding you know, where they are with it, what their weak, side, weak points and what their strong, strong points are. And so um, I'm really trying at the moment to develop more and more tools to aid with this kind of um, performance improvement. So anyway, thanks for watching.